one for the better team. I can't say it any other way. I don't really think everybody knows what they're about to witness. I have no talent when I see one. I should be an NFL scout. Jonathan, I don't like that pick. I love that pick. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Dorn Bay Podcast, and welcome to our division episode. Our division series, I should say, where we're going to do a episode for each division in the NFL. And today, in this episode, we have the AFC South. Woo! Super exciting. Uh, if you don't remember, or if you just didn't know, uh, in the AFC South, you have the Houston Texans, the Jacksonville Jaguars, Indianapolis Colts, and the Tennessee Titans. Now, last season, we had the Texans coming in first, Jaguars came in second, Colts came in third, Titans came in fourth. Only the Texans made the playoffs. So what we're going to do today is we are going to pick our team that's going to come in first in the AFC South and the team that's going to come in dead last in the AFC South. A couple things to keep in mind. We have a new coach in the AFC South. The Tennessee Titans have uh, a new coach, Brian Callahan. So we will see how he does replacing Mike Vrabel. Now, for first in the division, in the AFC South, I have the Houston Texans. They're going to go back to back. They just picked up Joe Mixon. They just picked up Stephon Diggs. They got a loaded team, loaded offense, uh, and I believe in this team. So they're going to come in first. And I think... The Houston Texans will come in first in the AFC South as well. Like you said, Jared, Diggs, Mixon, that offense is going to be scary. They also added Daniel Hunter on the edge on defense. So it's going to be tough to beat the Texans in this division. I'm picking Houston to win the division as well. I'm also picking the Houston Texans to win the AFC South. Nice. Job, we job, can dubs. all agree on something. Okay. I love it when we all agree. Yeah. Uh, Peace. And who is going to come in dead last in the AFC South? I have the Tennessee Titans with their new coach coming in dead Ooh. last. Mm. I have this team winning only two games. They're going to go 2-15. and 15. <laughs> Jeez. It's going to be a rough season for the Tennessee Titans. I also have them coming in last, losing mm. Derrick Henry. Jeez. I have the Jacksonville Jaguars coming in last in their division. Wow. Whoa. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Trevor Lawrence hater over here. I have the Indianapolis Colts coming in last in their division. Whoa. Yeah. 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 What? I feel bad to say it. I wanted this guy to be the next great thing, change, next man. great quarterback. What? But Anthony Richardson, he's, he's struggling. He's struggling. And what? We're gonna see that. He was injured. To be yeah, he, he was, was injured a lot last season, but still. No, but that is yeah, no, we gotta we really. gotta start with you, Jonathan. I, I gotta know what what do you think? You were a yeah. big Anthony Richardson right. fan coming out of college. I was. I mean, he may turn things around in the next few years, but he's still wrong, not ready. He still hasn't developed. What did he, What did he do? That's wrong. <laughs> what did he do? He, he just you? hasn't developed. <laughs> you can just watch from his game. He hasn't developed. He doesn't know. He doesn't like know the reads correctly because he's always opting to run first. So yes, he can use his leg. Yes, he's fast, but you gotta be able to stand in the pocket and make great plays make great reads he hasn't developed yet you can just tell by watching his game um the titans though will levis i think a lot of people are under like they're underestimating this guy okay he has a chip on his shoulder yeah. he's actually the official starting quarterback now now he knows it he's been training all offseason i think he's gonna come back stronger this season and um you know he has some pretty good resources like tony pollard and calvin ridley okay um oh, pollard yeah i think i think they're gonna do decent i don't think they're gonna last okay um the colts though if Anthony yeah. Richardson even stays healthy, I still think they're going to struggle. Um, he's still developing. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the next couple of years, he's going to be ready to, you know, take this franchise forward. But this season's not that season. So I think the Colts are going to last. Mm -hmm. and Interesting. Caleb, I got to hear from you. I mean, Doug Peterson, you got no That's, confidence. That Zero. actually is the biggest shocker to me. This team, this team was the winner of the AFC South just two years ago. Yeah, I think for me, it, I'm wearing the jersey of, you know, when they when Doug Peterson led us to Super Bowl. He's a legend for that. I'm always going to respect him and love him for that. He's on Jacksonville now. No no personal gripes with them. But for me, it just comes from they've been dark horses for, to me at least, for a few years now. 
and I just kind of see some ball security issues with Trevor Lawrence, some gelling of like just stuff that I would want to see have started to happen last season, not gel enough yet that I think I'm a little with, with Jonathan alluded to it. I like Levis. I mean, we'll see how the rubber meets the road when you're the starter, but the little I saw of him towards the end of last season, I'm like this, this guy, you know, rather than throwing these rookies right into the gauntlet right away, you give them a chance to develop, learn the league. Yeah. I think going into, you know, another year with him, he might, do better and one of the problems with the titans as a whole i mean i don't think Vrabel was a very good coach and it's i don't i'm not as familiar with callahan but the titans had a problem that the browns did where they were so run focused that as soon as their talisman running guy got hurt or wobbly in some respect that the whole offense struggled and their passing game wasn't enough and so much of the league has that but it diversifies it more and I think with Levis doing better, because he was kind of a gunner in my eyes, like just being able to throw it deep and getting some, I mean, he did have a pretty good game, you know, some big touchdowns. Like, I think if they feed into that with the new coaching, it might be more passing oriented. Now, who are they passing to? Where's AJ Brown? You know, it's like that's, that still might be some clout that they, they miss. But I think that puts them over with some of Jacksonville's issues with if Trevor Lawrence isn't at that level yet, because it's been a few years with Trevor Lawrence. And would I bet on Levis being more? I mean, that's kind of an interesting question. Who would who would I want over? You know, and I'm like maybe the t- the Titans could because if they were good with the run, then they have at least some good blocking in line, and that opens up the offense a lot. Um, mm-hmm. But I do like the Colts a lot. Like Jonathan, your reasons for the Colts, I, I like a lot too. It's just tough because we haven't. That's part of the problem. It's part of what makes someone a pro is that they're healthy enough, and that's sometimes out of their control, sometimes genetic. Who knows? But I like for me, I haven't seen enough of Richardson, but that's kind of the problem. But it's kind of, I'm with you, too, where it's like they're kind of in a – I wouldn't call them dark horses. I would call them maybe still building, like a year or two into a building stage. Uh, but I, I could see them all being good enough that the fourth place is like a game or two under third. Like, I don't think it gets super – I don't yeah, think the differential between that. one and four is crazy. So that's kind of why. Yeah, I think the one thing we all notice with Anthony Richardson is he – doesn't know how to slide yep. like the on what he got injured on he it, took a huge hit he was taking hits in the couple games that he played and john you're, you're pretty spot on on the fact that he would prefer to run the ball rather than progress through all of his reads and sit in the pocket i mean he's just more comfortable on the run um yeah and and who knows he could get injured again he's got he's got to learn how to slide for one and then two, I don't know, is Jonathan Taylor still good? Like, oh, yeah. could he carry this team like he has prior? I don't know. I don't in theory, know. Yes, but I drafted him fantasy one year, and it it blew up on my face. So that's part. Maybe that's part of why I kind of like Jonathan's take because <laughs> there were some injury <laughs> issues. And then I think I gave him. I think yeah. I dropped him, and then you picked him up, Jonathan, and he blew up. But <laughs> but that's part of it, though. Sometimes. The other thing is they didn't, from they didn't really pick up anyone. Like, they didn't make any big moves. Like, they kind of kept this team the same. And well, the same they're kind is, of building still. Yeah, they are not. They were 9-8 and eight last year. I mean, they got Joe Flacco got back Adnine up. Ed Mitchell. Ed Nine Mitchell, the rookie uh, out of Texas. Who knows if he'll play a lot. But it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for that that Colts team. But I still, I still think Titans uh, – <laughs> I think the potential of – Richardson is higher than Levis. I feel like I've seen yeah. enough of Levis, in my opinion. But you don't like the coffee he makes. I don't like that he puts <laughs> mayo in coffee. I don't like that he <laughs> eats bananas with the peel still on. Just uh, uh, you know, some things are but, not. But does right. he get on base? Does he throw the ball? <laughs> you know, like the money ball. <laughs> <laughs> I feel and and DeAndre Hopkins is injured. John, I don't know if if you have any news on like if he's coming back yeah. like early or yeah, he's gonna probably miss one or two games. Yeah, so Jeez. like it's it's undefined who the wide receiver one is on that team, but yeah, overall, do you have do, do you guys think two teams make the playoffs in this division or just the Texans? No, just Texans. The Houston's feel too like Houston. The Houston. It's too obvious. It's too <laughs> yeah, obvious. We all agree. I know. Houston. I hate it. But what, what makes me kind of I don't know, just to add to it is like they did put up a pretty good fight against Dallas. I think two years ago we talked about it last season or during last season. Like that defense is still pretty good because I would think like adding a guy like Stephon Diggs, nothing like not talking about his chemistry or personality, but just like they already had some pretty good receivers. They had another one. It's like is that too many cooks in the kitchen? I don't think so. What makes me bullish is that the defense is fundamentally good, that the coach is a fundamental, like, come from a defensive background, and mm-hmm. that they were already showing signs of brilliance. Like, they were a dark horse a few years ago, 
now the picture's like now because the Jaguars last year were the guys that were expected to be number one. Um, at least actually three of us picked them. Jared, I remember I picked Caleb, them. We picked them to be one, and Jonathan, you're them at two. Um, so we all fought. So it's different energy. That's where I'm with the we're talking about what you're talking about, Jared. It's different energy when the league knows you're good. Versus last yep, year, yep. it's like, oh, Stroud's this good? He's Sophomore this slump as well the, with quarterbacks? When the target's on your back and it's the NFL, like even the worst team in the NFL blows like some of these teams out of the water when it's like, I'm bringing you down with me. You know, like you never know the surprises. But I, I would, st- I still am comfortable with Houston number one. You know, as long as Stroud, yeah, obviously, no, no, barring all of this is barring any crazy injuries. But uh, yeah, I, it feels too obvious. But I, I, I like them to do well. 